Hi, my name is Rafael Sumitani and I'm a student from RefMG. Today I'll talk about reactive programming with JavaScript. Reactive programming is a programming paradigm that is concerned with asynchronous data streams and with propagation of change. A string is a sequence of ongoing events ordering time, to which we might want to react accordingly. And propagation of change means that the program will react to changes in events rather than just follow a strict set of instructions, as it happens with imperative programming, for instance. There are many uses for reactive programming and its concepts. However, it's clear that modern web and mobile applications benefit the most from this paradigm, since they are highly interactive and might have a great variety of user-related events. One simple example is a search bar that shows results with autocomplete, like Google's. The results that are shown are dependent of, on the user's input, which can be represented as a string of key down events. But the input is likely to change as the user continues to type, so the search results should react accordingly. When it comes to implementation, there are many languages and libraries that can be used to write programs that follow the reactive programming paradigm to some degree. JavaScript is a language that has some built-in tools that allow you to write code with some reactiveness. To prevent listeners, we're able to handle and react to events like clicks, mouse movements, typing, and etc. So let's look at this example. Here, we use the DOM document to get an element by this ID search, and we add an event listener to it. In this case, the event is key down. Our callback function, called key down event handler, sets a timeout, and once it is finished, updates the content of the target element to be what the user typed. But notice that every time the function is called, it clears the timeout and sets it again. This means that we will wait for the user to finish typing before we update the contents of the target. This is a technique called debouncing. Vanilla JavaScript event handling resources can be limited to implement programs that truly follow the reactive programming paradigm, especially when it comes to handling data streams. So we might want a library that allows us to write better reactive programs and with more possibilities. Thankfully, there are many libraries with this purpose, with ReactiveX being the most popular. ReactiveX stands for Reactive Extensions, and it is a collection of open source libraries that offers APIs for synchronous programming with reactive programming concepts for different languages. The implementation for JavaScript is called RxJS, and it's very popular in NPM, with almost 45 million weekly downloads. Instead of using event listeners like vanilla JavaScript, RxJS provides a core type called observable that is basically a function that provides a stream of values. It can be any stream of values, from user events to data that was queried from a database. To execute an observable, you must subscribe to it and provide a callback indicating how to handle the values given by the observable. This callback that consumes the values from the observable is called an observer. Let's look at some examples. Here, we create a stream of values from the sequence of numbers using the off function. Then, we subscribe to it and pass our observer callback. In this case, we just log the values. However, if we wanted to, we could create streams from events. Using the from event function, we could pass the element into which the events will happen and the event itself. Then, in this case, we subscribe to it and just log the value of the target. If you've ever heard of the observer design pattern, you might have noticed that it is very similar to what RxJS does. It would be correct. RxJS uses the observer design pattern to effectively apply propagation of change. But one of the most useful things about RxJS are its operators. Operators are functions that can apply a handful of different operations to manipulate and handle the observable streams. These operators can be combined and composed to do many things and even manage state. Let's take a look at other examples. Here, we create a stream from this click event at the document. Then we use the map operator to map the stream of events to a stream of x coordinates to where the click was made. Then 
we use the scan operator that manages an internal state and applies an accumulator function to it. In this case, we're getting the sum of all x coordinates. Finally, we subscribe to this observable and our callback just logs the count every time we click. In this other example, we can recreate what was done in the vanilla JavaScript example. First, we create the string using the from event function, passing the correct element and event. Then we use the debounce uh, operator, passing 500. And finally, on our observer callback, we update the value of the target. This will do the same thing that was done in the vanilla JavaScript, but this is a more concise code. There are many different types of operators that serve different purposes. You can check them all in the RxJS documentation. So, to summarize, when talking about reactive programming, it's important to remember two key ideas, data streams and propagation of change. JavaScript is a good language for applying reactive programming concepts, especially with the use of libraries like RxJS, whose concepts like observables, observers, and operators can be useful for handling asynchronous events reactively. So that was it. Here are some references that I used to make the video, but you can check the whole list in the description. Thank you.